wanting to enter into the Lord's presence for herself Amen. and receive, which is so wise. We need to just for a moment turn on our receptors. If we can just all activate the receptors on our, our head, brain. If you'll dial down uh, the intellectual part and dial up the spirit part so that your spirit can receive. And I want to ask you just to just imagine that Jesus has got like, this huge well out here. And he's got a big water source, a big well. And he wants us all to just jump in that well for a little while and dive into the living waters and just be washed and washed Amen. and rinsed and anything that's hanging on can be released. Any sadness? Because he has a sevenfold blessing for your spirit today. He's got a big blessing. So if you'll just like open your heart up to Jesus and, and just get your receptor saying, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Jesus. I want to know what more glorious things you have for me to know about you. And Father, we thank you that you have eyes to see in the <coughs> portion of our spirit. And we say, unite our hearts to fear your name. Lord. Yes, Lord. Bring us into one with you. Bring every part of our heart into agreement with you. Mm. We just surrender to you right now, our spirit and our mind mm. and our hearts and our brains and our bodies. Will you just come, Lord, yes. and teach us all good things, for you're the great teacher. Yes, Jesus. You are wisdom. And you long to gently mm -hmm. rain on us. Right now, we agree that we all want to jump into your river, into your well. Just be splashing around with you and having some fun today. Yes. Quicken every part, Lord. If there's any portion of our spirit that is carrying any kind of a sadness or wound or betrayal or abandonment or rejection, we just ask that you just wash us right now. And let all the portions of our heart come to you. You touch, touch us. Touch us. We surrender to you, Lord. Thank you, Father. King David prayed in Psalms 139, Search out my heart, God. And show me if there's anything hurtful in me. And teach me your ways, Lord. Teach me. Lead me in your paths. And I will bless you. And I'll teach everybody to worship you and praise you. The beginning of that psalm says, Lord, you have searched out my heart. You know when I rise up. When I sit down, you're acquainted with everything I do. Mm. There's not one word on my tongue that you don't know it all together. You know everything I'm going to say. Mm. You know what's in my heart. Where could I flee from your presence? Mm. Where could I get away from you? If I go up to the highest heaven, you're there. If I go down into the inner city, if I go sleeping the, under the bridge you mm -hmm. there. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you know us and you're intimately acquainted. Mm -hmm. And I ask that you transform our mouths this morning, that you just come and just take our little mouths mm -hmm. and make us blessers, a blessing in the earth. Mm -hmm. Transform us, wash us, cleanse our hearts, and let us be well connected, Lord, between our intellect and our spirit, 
both sides of the brain, all the hemispheres of the brain, everything about our mouth connected to you, Lord. Activate life. Activate life in this spirit mind connection, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you. We want to, if we can cut that, that'd be great. Thank you. Some of us, all that, all that we see in this room, all that we can see is the um, outside, the physical body, right? We can't see inside of our spirits without the Holy Spirit. And some of us have been very neglected through our parents, sad to say. That's kind of traumatic, actually. And our parents did not know how to bless our spirits and tell us who we were, tell us who we are. So to go from infancy to manhood on the inside, this was Don's shoe, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> to, go, to go from infancy to manhood is quite a number of huge blessings. There's just got to be blessing upon blessing upon blessing. This is who you are. We parents are the ones that fight to help our children get to that place of solid understanding of who they are in Christ. We are designed every Friday night, like the, the Jewish rabbi, the traditions, they would hold their children and bless them and speak life over them. And God never, never meant for there to be a negative impression on your heart about yourself. Hmm. He's just not the accuser. Amen. So we have to agree that God is full Amen. of blessing. Yes. And he, even when he needs to correct us, isn't he so good and kind? Yes. He just knows how to speak life in the most gentle, life-giving way. Amen. How thankful I am that he sees the inside of us. He sees the treasure, the crystals he sees. Now, I wish I had rubies, but this is just quartz crystal. <laughs> but he sees the emeralds and the diamonds and the rubies. He sees all the portions of your spirit long before you even know that you have any portions of the spirit. So, I've got a little heart here, and um, this is from, uh, this could be a broken heart, but God unites our hearts to fear his name, to love him. He brings us all together. He brings that emotional portion that can be out here, ooh, and he brings the highly functional person. He brings all those parts of our heart together. So now, most of us are slightly aware, if you're anything like I was, you're slightly aware that you might have some worth. Not sure what it could be. But there is this awareness, like I, I read the Bible and I do think that God says that I, he calls me forgiven and clean and worthy. But really, deep in our spirit, do we really believe that? So most of us are not, I'm just going to introduce you to, to some portions of your spirit. And maybe we're, we uh, haven't heard this before, so I ask you just to bear with me as we go through. Because um, the Bible talks about sevens. There's a lot of sevens going on in the Bible. And seven days of creation. Seven this. That, he, over a hundred times there's sevens. So one part of you is a truth lover. You just love the truth. Hmm. You just enjoy it so much that... Perhaps you're just always looking for truth. Your little radar is zoned in. Truth. You have truth. I like you. <laughs> you have truth. And sometimes people like that can be a little bit scary because perhaps there's still a little condemnation uh, residing in that part of their spirit. And maybe they don't even mean to give out that vibe of condemning. They're not even thinking about condemnation, but other people judge them because they love truth so much. Well, you must be mean because you're saying that the bar is up here and this is God's word and I don't measure up to that so therefore I judge you to be condemning. And maybe we're not wanting to be or even carry that vibe. So, um, but sometimes prophets, this would be the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes prophets are accused that way. And so that's one of those things that we want to ask the Lord to wash away from us because we just want to have perfect love that casts out all fear. I'm sorry, my phone's singing a song that I don't want him to sing right now. Just one second, let me just um, turn this down. Okay, I have to turn it down this other way. Um, so, thank you. Uh, there are other gifts, there's seven gifts. <clears throat> Mercy, mercy givers are so essential in the body of Christ. 
And they're so essential within your own heart. So you can have mercy on yourself and kindness toward yourself and kindness toward others. It always starts with God in you. Okay? This is a God in you thing. It always begins there. So that you can enjoy the mercy of God. You don't have to condemn yourself. Prophets are really hard on themselves. <laughs> and they're hard on everybody around them. Yeah. <laughs> and rulers are like snap too. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody get moving. Everybody move. <laughs> so, you know, ru what rulers are needed. They're the builder gift. We have to build, build, build. Now I'm going to turn the AC down just in case you're hot. I don't want you to go sleep. So, anyway, we need rulers. But we need the balance. You know, rulers have to have a really strong, merciful heart to balance them out. Exhorters need the uh, servants. And we all need, actually, to have all of these portions rise up within us. Because we are not really, com we're complete in Jesus. And does he have all of this? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does. And uh, the exhorter we think of as the party, party animal. And sometimes the exhorters don't know when to stop partying. Oh. You know, they don't know how to enter into rest and quietness, you know. So it's really important for us to be safe people. You know, an exhorter could be overwhelming. We could get around them and they could just be so happy that all their joy is just not jiving with our quiet, synchronized <laughs> peace. You know, and so us, us exhorters, we have to learn how to turn it down a notch. Hello. You know, so that when we get with some peaceful people, that they don't just get overwhelmed. Some of us have friends like that, don't we? <laughs> so we we who love peace, and there's such a balance between you know. You can tell that the mercy, I mean, where's mercy? Wherever she is, mercy brings in peace. The mercy just comes in the room, and there's this this relaxed atmosphere that comes with her, and that's. In your heart, you have a merciful portion that is such a blessing. And what's so neat is almost like a keyboard. If you picture how God can play the keyboard, you're a keyboard. And he knows how to play servant, mercy, exhorter, ruler. You know, he, he knows how to play you really well. And when you need to rise up and be that part of you coming out. And m most of us are parents. How many of us know around our, our grown children at least? We have to turn the teacher portion way down uh -huh. because we they don't want to hear what we've got to say. They think they know everything. That's true. So, so anyway, that teacher portion is really important in the body of Christ because good teachers know how to make it really fun to learn. But sometimes they can be judged as boring, too intellectual, too brainy, and and they can they can actually get towards <laughs> the Lord. Towards the Lord, they can be intellectual toward Him. Give me a list. God, I don't know why and how and when you're going to do this and you better tell me in advance so I can plan. I'm a planner. I'm a teacher. So, you know, that's where we have to submit to the Lord. And this, I guess it's maybe really hard for the teacher portion of our spirit when we hear Jesus say, take no thought for tomorrow. Hmm. Our little teacher goes, yeah, but, but, but what? <laughs> yeah, so, anyway, so uh, give her we love givers, don't we? We really love givers. But givers sometimes can be a little selfish. You know, the giver portion of our spirit, unless the giver is connected to Jesus. And then Jesus knows how to just control the door, the floodgate. He goes, oh, give, now oh, shut the door. Oh, he knows how to raise and close your garage door so that, of your heart so that you know when to give and you know when to close the door and go to bed or close the door and, and you know, bake cookies with your family. So he's really good about this balancing all of us. And when Jesus is in the middle, there's such a beautiful rest and peace. We're not wasted. He's not an overtaxing shepherd. How many of us know he's a good shepherd? And he's not going to waste our lives. He does have that priority in mind that first we, we give to our wife, to our husbands, children. He knows all that balance stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's not worried because he's the Savior and we're not. You know, mercy givers tend to think of themselves as the Savior. And we can have our legitimacy in giving, giving, giving. And servants can, I'm not happy unless I'm giving. You know, prophets can kind of, you know, they're fixers. 
Prophets can have that legitimacy lie of I'm not really worth much unless I'm fixing. <laughs> unless I'm up pre preaching and singing and, and you know. So what do we do if we get a cold and we're in the bed and we feel sad, you know, and lonely or something? Are we as worth as much then? Hmm. Or when we wake up in the morning and we look like a tornado hit, you know, <laughs> are we still worthy before the Lord at all times? And David gave us a key how to become worthy at all times. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Hmm. That means to take these two eyes and fix them on Jesus just all day long. I try to keep my, my heart, my mind fixed on Jesus Christ because hmm. He is the great stabilizer. He will make you so Firm, fixed, one heart, one mind. You won't get lost in the pull, divided heart. He is the, the definition of sanity. So if we want to be <laughs> sane and feel lots of peace and not pull, yeah. we will learn how to gather in and look at Jesus. Now, there are some things that fight against that in our spirits, some lies. How many of us know We'll put this right here. How many, now, so all of us, do we all agree mm -hmm. that each of us have all of these gifts? Even though we might present one out, you have more treasure than you know. Mm -hmm. You are full of treasure. Yeah. And it's, it's <laughs> up to you to discover your treasure. Now, Chris has made us all copies. Sorry, uh, just 12 and 12. There's 11 and 12. Like some, okay, cool. We've got at least 12. Uh, yes. I'm going to ask you to take it. If Chris is going to give these out, I'm going to ask you now. This is the work of Dr. Charles Wales, um, W A L E, and he is so cool. He and um, there's a, a guy named Arthur Burke, Blessing Your Spirit. Oh, I've got the copy of the book right here. Blessing Your Spirit. Where is it? Anyway. We're going to learn how to bless our spirits today with truth. And you're going to be able to activate things in your children, in your wife. You're going to activate your cousin or your sister, your family. You're going to activate them with blessing. Mm. Learning how to bless all the parts of their spirit. Can you explain something like this? Yes, yes. Uh, these are all in one set, so you can just take this whole packet. Yeah, whole packet. So whole packet. Now, I'm, I'm trying to give you this whole packet as a gift. There's one per couple. One per couple, if you don't mind. And the idea is that this is just going to be a taste. I'm putting a little drop of honey. This is all I'm doing today is a drop of honey on your tongue. You have got to forage this. You've got to get your shovel and you've got to dig deep into this because there's just so much here that we cannot even imagine, okay? So at first, uh, there's there's some sheets about why are, why are we talking about blessings and cursings? Okay, so that's the first step. And you'll find lots of little treasures in there. I've tried so to give you me. many little tools in here, including one called Inner Vows. If you haven't seen that, that's very helpful. Mm. Especially helpful for people who need to forgive, but they don't know who to forgive. They mm. just feel a little angst inside. They don't know what... I don't know why I'm troubled, but you know, this could be a helpful tool. So save these because each of you, your home is going to be a house of prayer. Your home in the days ahead is going to be a place of a refuge where people will come to be healed. And what I'm finding in my home is that when we use these tools, I give a lot of people tests, and each there's a test for mercy, to giver, all these different things. You find a stack, a, a sheet of paper, like this is all about te the teacher gifting. And inside of it, there's a test. And then you, it also shows you the lies that teacher believes sometimes. And that's a, that is the teacher portion of our spirits. Okay, so we all have a teacher portion. God gave you one, even if it's ignored. And you might think, oh, me? I don't think so. But God sees all of the diamonds in your heart. He sees all those sapphires and emeralds. And he says, yes, you are a teacher. So... Think about it as you read this, uh, like the lie that sometimes teachers believe is that they will only be legitimate if they know what's right and they're in the place of, I know what's right, therefore, therefore I'm strong and legitimate because I know what's right. And really, the way God, that's actually a curse. Mm. The Bible calls that a curse to think like that because right. where's our sufficiency? Our connection and our blessing is, in, is, is as we know Him. 
So teachers are intended to have this big radar up to God, and not led by the brain, but led by the Spirit. Spirit. Those are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit. Amen. So, you know, God gave you a brain, but it's only to be obedient to the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so teachers can get cerebral on God. They can get a little bit trusting in themselves. Have any of us ever trusted in ourselves? No. <laughs> of course. You know, we can say, I have a degree in this, and I'll tell you what I... <laughs> you know, we just, we just take a lot of pride in what we know. And that is that teacher portion rising up and, and mistakenly trusting in what it knows. Because mm -hmm. truth is, is we could say this, I don't know anything. I don't know anything apart from what Jesus tells me. I don't know. You know, we could, we could, uh, I grew up in a family where we gossiped a lot. We didn't call it gossip. We were good Baptists. We just said what we're thinking. You know, we just spoke what I, I'm just, I, we all gave ourselves permission to trash people. And it was just, it was just that we said, well, I'm going to tell you what a little common sense would say. You know, we, we had this arrogance. And, and it's just really, it breaks the family apart when we suppose that we can speak whatever we're thinking. That is really not God's permission. We have to have every part of our spirit under the Holy Spirit control so that I'm agreeing with God and I'm life-giving and many times he tells me to, you know. So I don't know anything apart from him. And Jesus said that. Hmm. We don't, we're not anything apart from him. So as you will this morning, I'm going to give you about 20 minutes to peruse over this literature. And what I want you to do in that time, I want you to get a partner, and I, I need for you to, to um, take a peek at these tests, okay? Now, what I'm gonna suggest is that you just take mental notes when you get home and you make another copy of it so you can retain a copy for all your friends when you're sharing with them. Um, then you can just write all over it. But, but you need these tools in your household because you, you're going to be having lots and lots of Bible studies at your house because all your neighbors are coming. Mm. They are coming to your house. <laughs> and you will be a, a teacher. You'll be activated. So as you look at this for just a few minutes together, and you're going to have partners here, look at your packet. Look at all those different aspects. All of these teacher, giver, mercy, ruler, exhorter. Look at all of those and make a little note about your partner and say, oh, this is you, Paul. I, this has got you written all over it, you know. This is you. Oh, Pat, look, see? I can see you in this and that. Now, every one of these packets has a little test with it, a mercy test. And so just think about looking at these giftings, maybe taking the test a little bit together. We can't spend lots of time on it because I want to do a little summary. But if you will take these, this packet and then also... Make lots of copies for every child that you have in your house, anybody you're discipling, because this is going to be a tool for you to bless their spirit and help them discover who they are in Christ. We really need to know that in these days. And we're going to have strength and a big joy capacity. Do we want to have a big joy capacity? And those are the strong people because the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we're going to stretch joy capacities here as we share lovingly with each other. And I deliberately left out the sheet about maturity on here because it shows maturity and immaturity. Mm -hmm. So this is not a tool to accuse. Mm -hmm. But if you see, for instance, um, anything in there, like I'm just going to pull one out of the hat, rulers. The ruler part of your spirit is super needful because that's going to activate you to rise up and do things in the Lord that you need to do. You need to be building like, some programs or a building or an orphanage. You need to be building relationships. That's the that portion that helps you get up and declare and say, this is what we're going to do. But the ruler inside of us sometimes is not a really good listener. Sometimes that ruler is just a little overbearing, and he says, I want everybody working now. You know, I'm working. I'm working too hard. And see, that's what sometimes rulers can, you know, get to working a little bit too hard. And then they put pressure on everybody around them. You know, and that makes it uncomfortable. So what we're really learning from this, make a note now, is safety. We're all learning how to be safe people. Jeremiah chapter 17 talks about the throne of God being a safe place for our heart. We want to be safe people. 
don't we? Hmm. We don't want people to get close to us and go, oh, I'm afraid they're going to bite my head off. I'm afraid they're going to condemn me. I'm afraid they're going to overwhelm me. I'm afraid they're not going to listen to me. I'm not going to be heard. So we can be like that in our flesh. But this is the fine-tuning of our character that God wants to do. And he can do this as, he speak, as he's speaking life to you. So I'm going to come back to you just in about 20 minutes. I'll put some worship music on. And we're going to just turn to your partner, get your stack, and get acquainted with it just a little bit, okay? Just kind of get acquainted and be ready to say, hmm, blessing. Now, um, if you don't have a partner, all you have to do is, is just get with Jesus. And let him talk to you in your spirit about your life. And, uh, and then when you get home and you feel comfortable and you have a friend, you can take this to them and say, I need some help to evaluate where I am in my gifting. Would you mind spending half an hour with me looking over these lists and just tell me what you see? Because that's very helpful. So um, anyway, just uh, take about 20 minutes and uh, see, just kind of plunge through there. And I'm going to put on a little music. <clears throat> and uh, you, I would encourage you not to necessarily write on this copy, but make other copies so you can write on it. And, um, okay.